Asmida, shall we start? Asmida, am I audible to you? Uh, sir, just give me one minute. Huh? Yeah, 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 thank you. Uh, sir, you can start. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Aspada. So, good evening to all of you. As usual, I will start with a short case first. Is my screen visible to you all? Uh, yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. So, this is a 44 year old lady who presented with history of aching pain around the right upper arm which is more after work for the last five years. It's an occasional paresthesia on the right upper limb, in the right, the right upper limb in the arm, but not in the head. This is the only complaint. In the examination, her spiral test was negative, motor power normal, DTR were normal, and no sensory. So I suspected that maybe she may be having my facial pain syndrome, because there was no finding except for the aching pain, occasional paresthesia, and right up for long duration. When the patient was about to be sent back, she volunteered under the complaint. She said she noticed thinning of the right thin array. So I started examining the patient once again, and the new which initially missed. And this is the thin, small wasting of the right thin muscle. This is the compare on the right and the left. It was definitely wasted APB on the right side. So I started examining once again. Is the APB on the right? Can you see what the APB on the right side? The is normal. The pressure policy is normal. And it's normal. That's good. Okay. Other than the other two, you Your opponent is also normal. There is no formal thing. If you are all normal, sensations are so I'll summarize the finding. The only finding was weakness of the right APB. The rest of the muscles normal, DTR normal, sensory normal. So what is the likely diagnosis in this patient? Carpal tunnel syndrome, sir. Yeah, very good. It's good. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay. But usually what happens, carpal tunnel, usually first symptom is sensory. Even before the weakness comes, sensory is the company. She never complained of paresthesia. Mm -hmm. No but that's a possibility. So what he thought, maybe a good thought. The only odd point was there is no sense either complaint or findings in this patient. The next question is, can CTS present pure thinner muscle wasting and weakness with the tendency? Okay, if it is there, then that's a good possibility. This is because the recurrent motor branch which supplies the thinner muscle Sometimes branches off from the median nerve prior to the onset of the carpal tunnel, like here. And travels along with the median nerve under a transcarpal ligament. Sometimes this recurrent motor branch alone may be compressed in comparison with the, uh, in, in, uh, instead of the main trunk of the median nerve, leading only to the motor paralysis in carpal tunnel syndrome. This is because this motor recurrent branch sometimes if so, it is more proximal to the usual side. So, it may only compress these recurrent branches, sparing the rest of the median. So, this 
So since it can sometimes be spied. So this, well, this is one explanation for the pure motor weakness in a case of Kaplan syndrome. So a patient was informed that this complaint was totally unrelated to the problem. So anyway, we do a nevocontrosis study to confirm that. So this is a nevocontrosis study done. Right median, as you can see, the amplitude is very low. Ulnar potential normal on the right side. Left median thin ulnar normal. If you right median not elicited, obviously because the amplitude is very low. But if you look at the sensory, median sensory is normal. Right ulnar is in the inelicited. Then left median ulnar normal. Lateral and medial antibrachial on both sides were normal. So, in summary, in electrophysiologically, right median motor snap is motor, um, there's no potential in the motor uh, part. Snap is not eligible on the alnana. But snap is normal in the median nerve distribution. So, what is your diagnosis? Thoracic outlet. Pardon? Thoracic outlet syndrome. This is typical of a thoracic outlet syndrome. It can only compress the, the only muscle affected may be the thena muscle can be confused with Capron uh, syndrome. The only clue is that sensory potential is there. The, is lost in the ana nerve. Sometimes CMAP also can, also can be decreased in the nerve. But sensory potential will not be affected in the middle. Because that is separate through the lateral cord, upper trunk through the lateral cord. Okay. So that will not get uh, affected in, in the case of Capron uh, syndrome, thoracic outlet syndrome. Which comes with the CA root or a D1 root, mainly a D1 root. Okay, any questions in that? Any problem in making diagnosis so they can go forward? The reason for worsening of symptoms on doing work? No, because, because she's using the shoulder muscles, no? In ischemia? Uh, maybe ischemia, maybe due to the root compression per se. Or vascular? Or maybe vascular. So okay. sometimes carpal tunnel can coexist with the thoracic outlet. Yeah, but the problem is that here there is no evidence of carpal tunnel because electrophysiology, and this is one point you have to remember is that in thoracic outlet syndrome, only muscle may be APB. And only root compressed is by the D1 only. Because the reason is, I mean, the, all the small muscles, the muscle which receives the sole supply from D1 is the polyspirus, which it may really be affected. All other muscles, are, uh, small muscles in the hand have got supply mainly from the C8. So if the D1 root is compressed by, that is a root which is compressed by the, the thoracic outlet, the cervical tendon, only that muscle may be lost. Because muscles have it, the C8 root can be totally spared. Just the opposite of what you get in the case of uh, this anacotomy um, uh, induced uh, lower plexopathy, where the CA2 is my maximum be affected than the D12. This is one difference between the two, because when you retract the thoracic cavity, the, the, it is a C8 um, root which is getting compressed or compressed uh, by the fraction of the, the spinous process in the case of uh, on the contrary, it is a D1 root, which is a strain on the cervical to which can come. So the point against the car pure carpet tunnel is the sensory is not this way. The person is not And moreover, if it's only carpet tunnel syndrome, you can't explain the absent sensory in the ulnar division, ulnar hernia. That will not occur with the carpet. If you say it's both are coexisting, nobody can say no. But so, uh, chances are less likely. So, what do you want me to do in this patient? So, this X-ray. X-ray is some prominence of the transverse process on both sides. Now, this is the MRI. MRI shows a thickening of the transverse process on the right side. You can see it on both sides now. If you trace, so this is a long transverse process C7, which is compressing the lower trunk of the brachial plexus. You can, if we have subsequent Philips, I am tracing down the 
and uh, transit post of the C sun but this is a transit process on the right side. And you can see there is a little more bulbous. If you trace a little more, there is more elongated. See this coming on the right side, seen or not seen on the left side. The next point, again, you can see on the right side, and it's probably seen on the right side, not at all seen on the left side. Again, here also you can see on the right side. So it's what you find is a large elongated transverse process of the C-spin which is compressing the lower trunk of the breaking process from the lateral leg. And this condition is called the right C7 transverse, transverse omegaly. That is a condition. So it's something similar to uh, the thoracic outlet, but the pathology is not the band between the, the cervical and the uh, cervical rib and the um, C7 trunk. It is the elongated transverse process. In the thoracic outlet, what happens is that there is a band coming from the cis to the rib. Here it is not only the cervical trip to the rib. Here it is not there. It's only the transit process is compressing there. And we are doing surgery. You know, in fact, she is not much symptomatic about it. So I thought maybe we leave alone. Because in a, in a, even if you do something, the wasting cannot improve. She is always normal. And let us risk other causing other weakness, then we can intervene. Even if you have surgery, they will not do. I said, anyway, we'll wait and see. She has no disability due to that. I just give her a question to APB. Okay, this is from the literature. Can you please, yes, yes, please. Can you please take Sir, can you please explain that why the APB is only affected in? No, that, is, uh, that is the one which I explained earlier. In fact, you show the picture later. In fact, I should have got the picture also. Now, what happens is in the cervical trip and down, it is the, the lower trunk is sitting on the cervical trip. Okay. The lower trunk, the inferior part is the D1 division, D1 part of the lower trunk. The component is occurring only in the D1 portion of the lower trunk. The muscle solely supplied by the D1 is the APB. So in D1 root involvement, that muscle invariably will be affected. All of the muscles have got innovation from the C8 as well. So that is why those muscles are not, can be affected, but in early stages, that muscle will not get affected. The compression is more definitely the muscle, other muscles are small muscles and we get affected. But APB is the first muscle to be affected. And this is the classical desperate description also. They come to you with only weakness of the APB as pairing with other muscles. Okay. Here, two pathology you can see here. This is right transosomagali and this is a cervical trip and the ligament attaching to the cervical trip attached to the uh, first is cervical uh, uh, sleep. Okay, this is the So, shall I go to the next case? If no questions, shall we? Any other questions? No, sir. Okay. This is a long case. This is a 41-year-old male. Uh, this case is from Manipal and uh, pursued to Charvida and Siddhartha. His complaint started eight months back. Has difficulty in walking in the form of imbalance to both sides. And slipping of chapels on both feet without his awareness for the same duration. Tingling sensation of both feet for the last six months. Three months back, he had two episodes of transient deviation of the angle of the mouth to the left side. First one lasted for five minutes, and the second one lasted for 10 minutes. During that episode of facial deviation, he was found to have mild difficulty in speaking. And afterwards, no further episodes. So, summarizing the, I mean, the history, going back to the history, total duration is eight months, between walking in the home of imbalance. And loosening of the chapels without awareness.
plus and numbness of the both feet. Three months back, he had two episodes of transient deviation. Yeah. First one lasted for five minutes, second one lasted for 15 minutes. During these episodes, he was found to have mind difficulty in speaking, which also subsided within two to three minutes time. And no other complaints. He's not a diabetic or hypertensive. And looking at the video examination finding, these are all normal. Look for a down B nystagmus, it does not have. The facial muscles are all normal. Okay, take it. Just relax. Random are normal. There is no pain in moment in there. Tone, normal in the upper limb. So also the power or muscles are normal. Ah, yes, correct. 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 Normal. Triceps normal. Yes. Okay. Good. I was looking for the pseudo There is no pseudo Yet numbers of both feet. So I look for the any pseudo Even though they did not combine any numbers, which was not there. There was no finger nose coordination. Okay. Good. good. There was beaver sir as negative. Okay, okay. So the tone the lower limb, there is smile sparsity to both lower limbs. Again, the pain with sparsity, which is not there in the upper limb. The power, however, is almost normal. Full, 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 this is upper limbs normally elicited. Biceps also elicited normally. It is slightly sluggish on the left side as compared to the supinator, but elicited. Nice right resistance is very elicited. The person was absent bilaterally. No reports were absent. Both knee and ankle jack, I mean, knee jacks are uh, brisk. Ankle jacks are also brisk bilaterally. Uh, more ankle jacks, ankle jacks, I mean, knee jacks are more brisk. Uh, you can take that as much. Well. And as are going bilaterally. Sensation which was normal all throughout. Just one, 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 one. Look for any pain, sensory pain level, it was not there. Vibration is normal in the upper and lower limb. JP sensation is normal in the upper limb. You can also always check the left. You can also check the left. You can also check the left. You can also check the left. It's normal. No, 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 there is no heel shin in coordination. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Now, is stand with eyes open without any problem, but rumbles as positive. Close your eyes. It is grossly normal except for the mild white taste. Mild is plastic gate. So, for examination, I am going to normal. Paleness normal, motor system appealing, tone power normal in both appellings, reverse negative, lower limb spasticity of both lower limb, power power was normal, ETR appealing more normal except for the diminished diet prices. Knee yeah. check risk bilaterally, and we check normal or safety risk, and does going bilaterally, abdominal reflex absent in all four problems. Sensation is all normal except for the embedded GPS or both tools. Normal is positive. Mild spasticity of both the lower limb and walking. And the walking was different. So, uh, any, any, if you want to see the video or clarification, I can go back. Otherwise, where is your localization? Sir, left is the C7. Compressive myelopathy, sir. Left C7 uh, compressive myelopathy. Yeah. Very good. So that's the only, only thing is that there is no sparsity in the finger plexus, nor any finger reverse was missed on this patient. But that's a good possible thought because that reverse is actually decreased and to the right. So somewhere above upper, above D7, maybe in the C7 because of the absent cases. Okay, any other thought, any other possibility you want to keep? Sir, the patient has got both the upper motor as well as the lower motor signs. In the form of upper, upper motor, in the form of your spasticity in both the lower limbs and up going close with absent, with absent of abdominal reflex. So it suggests that there is some upper motor problem. And in the, on, yeah, on one side, there is a, I, I think that he has got the lower part of the, both the lower limbs are a little bit wasted. If you, if you minutely observe, I think a little bit of wasting is also there in the lower part of the, just uh, above the ankle, there is some amount of wasting is there. And he has also got some evidence of joint involvement position sensation in the lower limb, along with he has got a rhombus sign. So it is a possibility that he has also got some posterior column involvement. So <laughs> like likely chance is that if we combine these two, can we think about a subacute combined degeneration in this yeah, case? Come, come, that's a good thought. That's a good thought. But the problem is that we don't have any clear evidence of a low motor neuron involvement in the lower limbs. Because even though JP sensations are absent in the lower limb, yes, Angle Jackson will exit all the discussion. So we cannot call it as a peripheral neuropathy. That's mildly wasting, okay, then you have to think of a motor neuropathy alone. That seems like we have no clear evidence to suggest that. There's no weakness to suggest. Only because of the mind wasting, we cannot say it has got element pain in the bone. So there's an element possibility for element C7 radical with the part because that absent plus is absent. That is quite acceptable. It's no problem. As you etiologically possible, you come later on. You, even without peripheral neuropathy, you can have subacute commendation. That's not the case. It's a good possibility, subacute commendation. But definitely, his poster column is affected. Undoubtedly, because the efficiency is absent, it's got a significant positive rhombus. So, postpartum is now affected in the presence of an absent peripheral neuropathy. Two episodes of transition facial deviation. Yes, yes. So, that's one possible that's a problem. Now, who has been the transition facial deviation? Was it EAA? Was it a seizure phenomena? Could be seizure, sir. Yeah, you don't know. It could be either a most likely. TAL, but it's not a hypertensive diabetic, call it as a DAA. But anyway, that possibility has to be kept in mind because especially we had had disarthry also at that time. So, any lesion in the cervical of pontal junction, so in view of the mild ataxic gait and also the history of TA like episodes involving the facial nerve? 
you know, that is only transient. The evolution is little different. The walking difficulty is gradually progressing. <clears throat> the transient phenomena is subsiding. So those two are, cannot be linked together. One is a progressive disease, the other is a transient phenomena. So the, moreover, the site is also different. Walking difficulty is a progressive and affecting the terminal tract and posterior column anywhere. Because clear evidence about diesel. That's all what we can say. It was the alcoholic. Pardon? Alcoholic? He's not an alcoholic. Okay. So, possibility is myelopathy about D7 in penal posterior malfunction. Probably D7 may be the, sorry, C7 may be the not decision. Transient facial deviation is subtria, could it be? This is what about cerebellar involvement? By no, that can be put the sensory attack seeds. And tandem walking also is defective. Yeah, that can be. Because, no, sensory deafferentation can produce exactly mimic cerebellar attacks in the lower limb and upper limb. Even severe incoordination upper limb can also produce sensory deafferentation. The only way to differentiate sensory attacks here from a cerebral attack is absence of eye signs and the disorder. If these two are present, then we can do it in the Otherwise, any degree of incontinence upper and lower limb cannot differentiate whether it's a sensory or cerebral. But there is no pseudothetosis, sir. No pseudothetosis the upper limb. Yeah. The postural may be more of it in the lower limb. And moreover, in the upper limb, the JP sensations are normal. We need not expect a pseudothetosis. And so he said the level of lesion is about D7, but where we don't. It may be the upper dorsal uh, cervical, uh, cervical cord compression, the MRI may spare the upper limb at all. It only affects the lower limb first. Heel shin incoordination can happen in sensory attacks here, no? Can, can occur, can occur, definitely can occur. Severe incoordination can occur. The patient will not know where the foot is. But usually in sensory attacks here, when you look at the feet, the incoordination should be less, no, when compared to sort of uh, attacks. Uh, uh, your point is, uh, usually that type is good, but you must see some kind of, I will show you another next time one uh, case, subject come in the version. The patient cannot even sit because the tongue is swaying. The whole limb goes into hair And that is why, uh, because in Korte, we used to see uh, tropical ataxic neuropathy. <laughs> Neuropathy is minimal, but attacks is severe. It all depends upon which fibers in the peripheral nerves are affected. The fibers in the spinal, the, which are destined to go to the class column, that is, which ultimately go to the spinal cerebral attack, the cerebral limb. Those fibers are affected in the peripheral nervous system. Attacks is very dominant. Same thing as uh, same thing what you get in uh, mm -hmm. syndrome. The beneficial syndrome sensation may be normal, entirely normal. But if a severe attacks are due to peripheral nervous system disease because there the afferent input, afferent fibers on the spindles are affected and the progressive dysphenols are affected, which is trying to go to the cerebral. That is why sensations are normal, perceptual sensation is normal, but that sensation, which are, I mean, that input required for coordination to reach the cerebral and that is it. So, the neuropathy can got severe attacks here. Example is Millipitous syndrome. Second is our topical attacks in neuropathy. And in some cases of um, uh, uh, some people in the Okay. Let's proceed. So what is etiology? And we'll get post-tropical and variable to think of some people in That's the first thing you should keep in mind. Thing is, he can't explain the trans in this area. But of course, we have to rule out a compressive myelopathy in view of the C7, C7. Even though there is no other evidence to suggest the cervical cortex. Okay, so what do you want? MRI cervical spine. All right. Like, yeah, any doubt, please? Okay. He was, in fact, no, been, been through anything you want to say? 
No, sir. Cervical, okay. uh, uh, MRI cervical bicep, not dorsal, we should not. Dorsal arch is required, of course. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, because the C7 root involvement, cervical was thought of as the first one. But we have to screen cervical, everything is required. Okay. Okay. In fact, this person was admitted in this hospital five months back. I am seeing him now only, this in May. It was seen five months back. And MRI was taken at that time. I'll show that MRI. This is the MRI taken about five months back. It's taken from the screen. That is, his picture is not that good quality. There is not much of a cord change. I'll show one more thing. Uh, there is no compression anywhere. And I will show the video once again. And some hypercity within the cord again, not convincing. That area. Then the thoracic cord was done. Okay. So it was normal. The speed from top to bottom, from above downward. This is axial cut. This is body. So there is nothing in the spine. So what do you want now? And your department, I, I, I'm sure the quality is not good, but I have to take from that what do you call the, um, the computer screen only. That is the quality is not good. So this was taken five months. Yes. Sir, sir, yes. Sir, sir, you know, no atrophy, no atrophy. And your research... Repeat the MRI, sir. Pardon? Repeat the MRI again, sir. Okay, we want to repeat MRI now. Okay. So, in fact, well, since, you know, suppose you happen to see the patient at that time, five months back, with a similar finding, okay, you can, yeah, now you can ask for that. Now, I'll, I'll show you the investigations which are done earlier. Now, they did a serum beetle was done because the MRI was normal. This is vitamin beetle, which is uh, more than normal. So there is no evidence of this beetle coming in there. Okay, then MRA brain was done at that time. This is more than five months back. This is MRA brain. Yeah. There is some subcortical white matter hyperdensity, which you can see. In that uh, near the uh, uh, near the U fibers, the U fibers as well. See, I'll try once again. Not very ventricular, subcortical white matter hyperdensity. So, uh, to another nearly EMT two. You can see that. It can diffusely present on both sides. So, being contrast was done in the white mat viper density. It's a main contrast. It's a contrast at that time. Lesions are not enhanced. There is no enhancement seen there. So, what will you do at this point of time? MRA drain showed some hyperdensity in the subcortical white matter, which is not enhancing. Or will you proceed further? Demyelination yes, versus sir. leukodystrophy, sir. Pardon? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Any, uh, any thoughts? CSF, sir. You don't you definitely have to do CSF. But what do you think about the white matter? How far it is significant? Is related to a problem? Maybe it's related to the problem. It's significant, sir. 45 years, 41 years. 
It's only for 20 years, correct? But that is, that is not a Nancy with contrast. Demyelination versus leukodystrophy. Okay, that's a possibility we have to keep in mind. Right? Also, mitochondrial cytopathies. Okay, right. We can also do a serum homocysteine. I think uh, these sort of lesions is described in uh, B12 also. Yeah, particularly this kind of hypnosity is very well described in B12. Serum homocysteine has to be done. Right. Those episodes of stroke like syndrome, mitochondrial. Uh, but it is well very, very unlikely, guy, because no, it's too transient. Not like stroke like episode. That should remain for days. This is only for a few minutes and then subsided. Could be a stroke of hyperhomocystinemia. I don't think, I don't know. This can this can serve hyperhomocystinemia. They last for a longer period of time. So what about cadacil, sir? Cadacil. Again, no cadacil. This, this is not the this is not the picture of cadacil. The cadacil classically affects the temporal lobe and also the external uh, the external capsule. And the percentage is entirely different. Cadacil. Yeah. So let us see. So what about in which you want a CSF study? Okay. The CSF because he's got a suspected myopathy, MRI normal, some white matter change in the brain, eight months duration, not a very slowly progressive one. So CSF, so these investigations were done in December 2020, that's five months back. CSF showed a protein of 198. And Glucose was low, 27. And it's a, it's HIV and uh, cytology, BDRL. No, I, no, I, okay. You want HIV, okay, BDRL, tuberculosis, fungus, carcinomatous. <laughs> the cells were 70 cells and predominantly 100 percent cells. Celebrated protein, low sugar, and pleocytosis. Naturally, you have to think of a chronic infection, like syphilis, tuberculosis, brucella, things like that. Even malignancy has also speaking in there. So, so the CSO was sent for peptococcus that was negative. Gene expert was not detected. Mycobacteria was not there. Then Look for malignant cells, only much lipocytes, cells, no malignant cells. Then uh, gene expertologists have already shown, no AFP. ADA level was elevated, 21. CSF lactate was also elevated, 38.4. The cryptococcal mm -hmm. antigen, negative. VDRL, negative. Both TPH and, and RE, uh, RPR was done, both are negative. Then brucella agglutination test was negative. This is the first one, 15, 12. Take a look at the D. Then it is repeated about two weeks later, 15 and 28. 13 days later. At that time, it came as positive, but the title is only 1 in 18. There's a report, the comment is that positive is a low title. To confirm the diagnosis by serology, demonstration of rising antibody levels in paired series assumption. So, this is the argument in the lab. So, it's a convalescent syndrome for 10 to 10 days. So, we'll send another CS about okay. Other investigations on the previous submission is PSA, alpha beta protein, custom chronic antigen. C C A one ninety nine nine and the rapid is rolled but no. Hepatitis was negative. And HIV was also negative. And um, C M C P K three not seven upper limit is one forty one seventy one. Any profile was done. That's also negative. Repeat CS was taken uh, two weeks later. But that showed 90 cells, but look at the RBC count. That means we cannot rely on the CSF report because it is, it is a big chromatic time. 
glucose is low csf protein is 180 normal same as previously csf lactate was elevated ada was 13 less than previous value brucella agglutin was repeated again showed a borderline positivity on cis1 there is no elevated type it is mean as 1 in 80 Then ANA uh, and nuclear antibody type were all done, which is negative. Then they did a repeat 1.23.9 that some Brazilian antigen came as negative. Anglotin test came as negative. CD4 condo is normal. So what will you do? Suppose you have a patient at that time, what will you, how will you do this? What will you do to manage that patient? ിസ് Since there was no improvement, patient is currently readmitted in May 2020. Okay. So what do you want to do now? MRI brain. Okay. Is the repeat MRI done in May? This is the flyer. The white matter changes are there. It's still more, more, uh, more, more prominent and confident now compared to the previous one, but not grossly enlarged. It is much more prominent relative than the previous MRI. Yes, the VDRL. But VDRL was negative. Both VDRL as well as RT, TPHA was negative. This time, the, the contrast. I'll come to that. I'll try to contrast. This is the SWI. No MRI is seen. So contrast was done. Look at the contrast now. The left matter was seen is not seen, but you can see some lesion there in the and the left meninges, some ring-like lesion there on the left side, on the right side, turning the parietal cortex, but. The so-called white matter changes or automation, whatever you see, did not enhance. I'll show the. This is the freeze um, frame. This is small ring enhancing like thing seen in the and some of the little meninges on the right side. Now, what would you like to do? CT chest and abdomen for tuberculosis. It was done. That okay. I did not show that. It was done. ഇടിയ ലെവൽ വാസ് എലിവേറ്റഡ് ഇ സി ഡബിൾ ഐ ഡോ നോ ദ ഡൺ ദ ടോർ നോട്ട് 
So any role for IgG4? IgG4? Uh, okay, it could be IgG4, but what is causing is myelopathy then? You find a small lesion there, but we have to document what is causing. We have to correlate finding investigation with your uh, clinical findings. MRI repeat was done, sir, cervical and both. This is, uh, so you want cervical MRI repeat? Yes, sir. MRI brain was also done. You want to repeat MRI cervical span also? Sorry, NMO. NMO. With that finding, do you think it's NMO progressive disease with the low sugar and then uh, elevated protein? Is some kind of an infection. infection. So whatever enhancement what you see is in the leptomeninges. Major involvement is very rare in an More can produce. And um, the uh, infective etiology like tuberculosis, everything we have ruled out. Yeah. Okay. Fungal is uh, uh, cryptococcal negative, other fungal yeah. aspergillosis and all. We did not do. Okay, so what will you do? Or a Those... cytospin. CSF cytospin has to be done. No, get it if a malignant cells is done already, negative. Okay. Sir, in, in our CSF. country, in, in yeah. our country, we must think for the tuberculosis. Okay, okay. Right. Yes, somebody else has a comment, please. And it can be unrelated. Which one? Can it be unrelated in the sense that his spasticity and all is probably not caused by this current lesion and the oh. CSF abnormality? Um, but you know, when you get a person with eight months, only eight months duration, and um, and he has got some CSF abnormality, you have to think of a lesion responsible for that, not uh, neglect that thing. Then do a CSF and do all the uh, microbiological tests for all the fungi and. Why? Again, repeat. Repeat again. Yeah. Already they have done the full panel they have done. They have just done the cryptococcus fungus and... Uh... Yes, yes. It has done already. Already no, done. No, yeah. have, have they done all, I mean, uh, bacteria, virus, Oxido. everything? Oxidomycosis. Oh, if you can explain things that way, you will reach nowhere. I think you say we have to think of common things common. You know, let, you know what I thought? This one... So here, let us look at the patient's picture. What did he present with? Is there a doubt about it? No. The white matter change in the brain is there. So what? It cannot explain the symptomatology of the patient. It's got a positive ornament. It's got a criminal sense with the thoracic cord or cervical cord. So there is something there which, are, which is hiding us. Okay. And the clue for it is the Enhancing ring like lesion the left meninges. So you have to go to the contrast MRI of the thoracic and cervical kidney. So that is better. And somebody is also asking for it. Okay, you can find an enhancing lesion in the cortical surface left meninges. We did not display, we did not, it will not display the neurotic disease. It's probably similar. So what do you want? But earlier MRI, it was contrast only, no, sir? You have taken earlier MRI. Earlier MRI was, it was not contrast. Yeah, earlier MRI was the three months was just taken, the MRI brain was, uh, was uh, contrast MRI was normal. That they had shown. Okay. At that time, contrast MRI of the spinal cord was not done. So this is the contrast MRI of the spinal cord. Look carefully what do you find. I'll show the please film. This is the axial cut. We look at file enhancement, enhancement there. I'll show the uh, uh, these frames later on. That is the area where you should enhance the surface of the cord. 
Look at the X sagittal cut now. Did you see an enhancement there in the trial server there on the dorsal cord? That may be responsible for his myelopathy in this patient. And you can also have the enhancement lower down also here. This is the enhancement which is seen there. The corresponding cut there on the surface of the cord. This is the cervical area showing enhancement. So with that, now we know he has got a meningeal disease up in the cervical cord and also in the brain. Only that granuloma like thing is causing his repeated the transient deviation and the dysarthria might have been a position in that, in retrospectively. That history we can't take out thinking, but retrospectively, that is where it has been. So, with the, what is the commonest thing we will you consider with the sp uh, spinal arachnoiditis causing this condition? Tuberculosis. So, we will put the patient APT with steroid. And moreover, ADA level was elevated. It was also elevated. Twice it was read, two times it was done, then both the times it was elevated. See, it is 21.2, upper limit is 9. This is also repeated, so the second time also is elevated. Yeah, this is the third one, 13.3. That's the story of the patient. Mm -hmm. the, the thing I wanted, the, the lesson is that so you, whenever you don't be carried away by the MRI finding, some you find some white matter changes, you may our attention will be diverted to that. But always try to correlate whatever finding you have with that. Uh, this thing. Now, thinking back, but that white matter lesion may not be benign. Some of, um, some UBO can occur, which in many MRI can produce uh, insignificant white matter changes. But that need not be benign because that is also increasing in size compared to the previous. So how to correlate with that thing in our patient? Tuberculous vasculitis. Yeah, maybe vasculitis. Or it can be part of tuberculous encephalopathy. Because tuberculosis sometimes can produce asymptomatic change. I will come to that later on. Okay, this is the one. I had to see this patient. So I was not knowing how to explain the white matter change in the brain, whether we should to can it occur with tuberculosis meningitis. So this is the so look at the picture. This is the MRI finding. Some of them describe the tuberculosis meningitis. They call this call them as tuberculous encephalopathy. It's patients with tuberculous meningitis. This is another this is but it can make a better producing changes in the brain. So these are not granulomas, sometimes can occur with this kind of changes can occur in tuberculosis. It's not very common. It's only retrospectively I'm thinking this may be the explanation this patient. Any questions? No, it was it, 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 when, I, I, when the last month, month only, it started on a kidney and then came out of the follow. But it it, it, it would take some time for improvement. Sir, so, his chest x ray was normal? Normal, chest x ray was normal. So, sir, in your experience, what is the percentage of patients who are having gene expert positivity? Anything other, I have not seen a single case. <laughs> Same with me also. I have not seen any patient positive gene expert. Gene expert, better, better than gene expert, CB net is better. Sensitivity is high, specificity is high. All said, no, it's... All, they are, all they are theoretically correct, but practically they are not... Theoretically, correct, theoretically I have not seen. The same thing happens with encephalitis. How many times you find positive? It is, I've definitely seen positive HSC by, by um, antibody positivity. 
but it is much less compared to what the radio you know, when uh, the incomplete is what you see passing in a picture you can see is maybe not showing any this thing. according to literature if the if we say is it is done between 3 days and 10 days the sensitivity of picking up hsv positivity in the sensitivity is total the 90% percent, 99% percent. but hardly ever we see that multiple this pitfall in making a diagnosis when i was in kottayam I was I used to go to pediatric department uh, for taking class. So one which a child was shown to me, typical X-ray type down in the brain, typical tuberculosis meningitis. So nothing, don't do anything. So like unfortunately, that patient CS was sent for this this kind of a CBN at and things like that. So all came as negative. So what happened? The seeing the negative result, the doctor in charge stopped everything. This is negative. You know what happened? That child, child came two months later with total blindness and the complex increasing X-ray and all it has all knocked out. And I took a very huge hit. So don't you have to always think logically, clinically that should be given rather than the investigations. Always look at the false sensitivity and false positivity. False negativity and false sensitivity. So in this case, even if it is we are not getting anything, right? Let us see that as one common thing. As somebody was telling in India, the first thing was what they had to keep in this tumor. Suppose the sir, how do we differentiate a pile enhancement from a dural enhancement in the spinal cord? And what this is, is the significance? This is the pile enhancement because that enhancement is reaching up to the cord. We look at the way which has shown the hypertensity was seen within the cord also. In a dual enhancement, that will not occur. See, in the pack, difference between the packing meningitis and the leptin meningitis is that in packing meningitis, it will be converted to the dura. In leptin meningitis, it will dip into the subpack or the spray. That means it is covering. Similarly, that here it is, and the enhancement is coming into the parenchyme. It's leptin meningitis. Suppose that enhancement of the spinal cord was not demonstrated. Also, we would have treated with ATD, you no know, sir? Definitely, definitely. That should be no problem. So that enhancement is very subtle. You have to really look for it to find out that enhancement. Why we have looked for it? Because we have to take a lot of decisions there. Otherwise, our eyes will not go to the area. Okay, shall we go to the next case? Yes, sir. Okay. This twenty-seven-year-old lady has presented with right focal and become second generalized seizure for the last fifteen years. It's from the age of thirteen. Over for the last four years, patient complains a continuous twitching movement of the right face, which disappears during sleep. This is a twitching movement of the face. What do you think about that teaching movement? Right hemifacial spasm. Okay. Right hemifacial spasm. Okay. Focal it focal is a short. Focal seizure. It's like a facial myoclonus. Focal <laughs> seizure is definitely one. I I I think the right hemifacial spasm is first. Okay. Followed. By okay. okay. It is absent during sleep. It's absent during sleep. Yeah. No. No. Organic. No, no, no. Okay. Um, uh, 
deal with you that somebody said myoclonus. See, in fact, myoclonus is nothing but a focus seizure. If you get repeated myoclonus, it is a focus seizure. So okay. you, you have got a thump at a myoclonic jack like this. Okay. Yeah. So it's okay repeatedly. This is a focal seizure. Okay. So if you say facial myoclonus repeatedly, you say facial focal seizure. Now I want you to look at one finding one more time. Then what is it? I know the clue is in the face itself. No, no. I I see so what is the what is the diagnosis? That is closing the IGS cycle. Pardon? The closer of the eyes is not a, a spontaneous one. She's uh, it's a. Oh, it's no. a... So that's She's not... elevating the eyebrows. Or... No. Okay. I will show the next week. This is the first word. Now you look at the patient did me that. Now, what is happening to the opposite eye? Before us, why sir? Because what's the major doctor in the lower part of the face? What is coming up to the opposite orbital? Did you see that? It is opening, it is like widening. Widening, it's opening it. Bite. Oh, right, the opposite orbital is also contracting synchronously. Did you see that? Yeah. See that? Is opening it. See that on the opposite side. What does it tell you? That is the clue in this patient. No, this is a focal seizure. In a hemifacial spasm, the other eye will never get affected synchronously. Okay. But why should a focal seizure produce opposite orbitalis contraction? The most important thing neurology required in neurology is, like, is what I always teach that is the common sense and logical thinking. It is focal seizure, but how? Why did it, why did it, why should it produce opposite of the So what is this? Because it has got bilateral representation. Okay. See, when the impulse coming from one cortex, it goes to both or Okay, it will not turn the opposite lower face, only the upper part. There is protected by one hemisphere is supplying both orbital and Okay, so you can, unlike a weakness, yes, it's a positive wave, it's, in a, it's an excitation is occurring. So both orbital and is contract. Did you get my point? Yes, sir. So, is it there in the first video also? This one? Yes, there in the first video also. Video. Look at Look at the opposite. You can see that. See the opposite eye. It's contracting on the opposite side. See that? That is the clue differentiate from this. And another point is usually we expect that in epilepsy, a partial should continue, should disappear, should persist during sleep. They're all the time. Some of the focal seizures can disappear during sleep. Madhu, hello, Madhu, I am Suresh here. Yes. Madhu. Yeah, tell me, Suresh. Hello, how are you? Yeah, very nice. Madhu, what I thought in hemifacial spasm, there will be co contraction of frontalis muscle. That is called other Babinski sign. Yeah, uh, so, uh, that, so that was not there. Not other, there. I thought other differential diagnosis could be blepharous spasm, no? No, blepharous spasm, why should the lower part of the face contract? Uh, that, that is the problem, correct only. But it is not hemifacial spasm. Because there will be always a core contraction of a frontalis muscle. Right. Yeah. Now, we have to diagnose why focal seizure is the contraction of the orbitalis. So, that's the answer. Now, so it's epilepsy partial is continuous. 
what is the actual etiology in this patient? And you see the rest of the video, this examination video. If the appendix were normal, okay, then this is the position posture of the right foot. The weakness of the dose of plexus and inverters. Nature was weak. Left side was normal. Nature was brisk. Bilaterally more on the beyond, uh, bilaterally more on the right side. Right plantar uh, has got a clonus on the right side, not present on the left side. And there was going on the race. This is the way she was walking. Normal posture with the foot and back the right foot. Right side of the face is not developed properly. The face is because continuously twitching, so we cannot come in the distance. I mean, my mm -hmm. so findings see, kind is normal, film is normal, don't poorly smiley spastic city on the right side, valgus deformity, the right foot and toes, and dystonia. Because of the right dose of excess virtus of angle injections of injections of policies wrongness. Policies are the values is wrongness. BTR risk in the right lower limb and the right plant are ongoing. No sense. So what is the likely diagnosis keep in mind? Cerebral palsy. Or cortex and PHS3. It's not weakness. The weakness all came later on. What was an early? Rasmussen's encephalitis, sir. Perfect. You're perfectly right. So, clinically, we can look at the brain. Whenever you get epilepsy, a partial is continue. The one possible was strongly considered an autoimmune problem, like Rasmussen's encephalitis. I'll show the MRI in this patient. Look at the MRI. Coronal cut, the left audit is at the field, the different degree slightly dilated compared to the right. Other features. The right and left ventricle, this is slightly dilated. Silic fish is slightly prominent, and the atrium is enlarged. Some identity between the common cilic fish and the neurotic scar. Again, you can make out the dilated product and dilated ventricle and the direct star. And again, this is one of the classical find display the progressive atrophy of the caudate with causing the lateral dilation. The ciliate which is also dilated. So it's rasmosis and sensitivities. Now I'll tell you a few. This is adult onset rasmosis and sensitivities. Usually, you know, rasmosis and sensitivities in children. And the presentation also slightly different between children and adults. Some cases of asthma encephalitis have a less common presentation. Only 10% of the cases described in case studies start with adolescent or adult. The age course is usually slower. Final deficits are not as severe as in children. The semiology can be more characteristic of temporal of epilepsy. This is presentation have been described with unilateral movement disorders, including hemiathetosis and dystonia. This patient's got a dystonic portion in the right foot. This is again from the literature of our patient. See the progressive atrophy of the hemiatrophy on the one side and the lateral, the lateral ventricle and the severe, severe atrophy in the cordae. The lateral atrophy also. This is again from the literature showing the terminal atrophy. Coordinate atrophy showing the dilated on SMA dilatation and atrophy of the cortex on the same side. So it's an autoimmune chronic encephalitis characterized by frequent and severe seizures, inflammation of the brain, mental duration, progressive loss of neurological function, including motor skills, speech, and mental paralysis on one side of the body. 
Children with reversible encephalitis frequently enter a phase of permanent but stable neurological deficit after eight to twelve months. But in adult, this is how the cellular descent continued to progress very slowly. The fulminant course is seen in children, but a slow, gradual progress is seen in adults. The median age of onset is six years with the age from infancy to adulthood. In some patients, a prodromal period of mild hemiparesis and frequent seizures may precede the onset of acute stage by up to seven years. They may kind of mild hemiparesis and frequency, then subsequently they can go into EPC. Just like this particular girl had. She had occasional seizure earlier, now she has gone on to place a pressure scan here. The acute stage is marked by frequent seizures arising from months in the hemispheres. As the disease progresses, different focal seizures may already summer, suggesting the newly affected areas in the hemispheres. This is the time goes. They start with initial seizures, then APC, then it becomes relatively quiescent period, static, but it's supposed to remain for a long period of time. I mean, adult transmissions, roughly 20% of the cases, the discriminant case series, start in adults. The disease is usually slower, and final diseases are not as severe as in children. The semiology can be more characteristic of terminal epilepsy. This is the epilepsy. Now, these are the MRI findings. They can have unihemispherical focal cortical activity, white matter signal change, misogyny involvement. Dependent signal of ipsilateral coordinate, or ipsilateral coordinate at bottom letter P, all this can be seen in our patient. This is the this, this MRI to show you the progressive atrophy over a period of This is the first MRI, not much atrophy. The second one has progressed, that ventricle is completely prominent. This is four months after the onset of illness. I think this is three years after the onset. See the degree of atrophy on the right side in the ventricle and direction. The patient sees 10 days history of encephalitis. What you see there? Second picture is nine months. You can see the progressive dilatation of the ventricle and the sylvian pressure. This is 12 months. This is 18 months. And 80 years, see the degree of atrophy the patient. So this is a progressive evolution process. Okay, any questions? How did you treat this patient, sir? It's chemotherapy. The patient has given IVV. Not tolerably. Yeah. So I think it's a type. No, with anticonvulsants. I need to find a convulsion in the epilepsy of partial discontinuity and did not subsign. So you put the one in percent. I do not know the what, what happened to the child patient later on. After this, I have not seen the patient. Sir, any scope for surgical intervention? Yeah, there's surgical. It's a hemispectomy is one of the treatment options for uh, asthma sensibilities. The IVIG also was a seizure persisting. And this, you know, I do not know whether IVIG was given in this patient because uh, whether, whether it's IVIG or it's not, I don't remember. There's a case I seen two years back. Anyway, medial person was given and the patient could afford the other part, but I am not very sure. The treatment options are IVIG, other immunosuppressant, and uh, is uh, the one drug which we go for uh, real transplant and what is it? That also is indicated. Tacrolimus. 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 Even though the antibody was uh, GLUR3, but it did not be present in all the cases. So antibody may not be positive. We can't make a diagnosis by antibody. Okay, the antibody you know. In most of the situations, it's negative.
Any explanations or why is happening only on one side since it's autoimmune disease is affected by that? Yeah, they, they don't know. This is the one of the peculiarity of this Rasmussen's. But it will go into progressive, but we don't know. I don't know. It also does not say why it is completely logic. What is it is correct? Logic we should affect in both sides. And the case reports in which it affects one hemisphere subsequently affects the other hemisphere. That reports are there, but extremely rare. Okay, shall we stop here? Sir, one doubt, sir. This eye, eye movement was not, though it was bilateral representation, but then orbicular oculi was not contracting in the same manner in both the eyes. Uh, that may not be there, no? Because it has got a soul supply is always contralateral. I mean, main supply is contralateral. Only partial supply is the uh, ipsilateral. You know, in all um, by, in muscles separated by the both hemispheres, for example, if you take tunnel um, uh, involvement, is separated by the entirely by the contract hemisphere. Other muscles have got bilateral supply, but the proportion of supply varies from individual to individual. Same with palate, uh, tenth nerve involvement. That is why in a severe acute hemiplegia, some patients you can have a contralateral palatal palsy, and that will improve it rapidly. Some people may not have any palatal palsy at all. Because they have got a 50-50 representation. Somebody has got 80-20 representation. Mm -hmm. Brunt of contract vehicles will be maximum, website vehicles will be minimum. That's only 20%. Similarly, if you take bilateral supply of the orbicular socle, the major contribution is from the opposite hemisphere. But some supply is from the ipsilateral hemisphere. That is why when irritated, the opposite orbicular is conducting much less than the Opposite, opposite, uh, uh, opposite, uh, opposite, uh, opposite, uh, you got the point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. If all bilateral in that that, that this exists, separate from the contact hemisphere, ipsilam, they vary from individual to individual. In this 50 50, nothing will happen. Ah, okay. Okay, shall we stop? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good, good. good night, Madhu. Excellent cases, Madhu. I okay, was there at the beginning. All the okay. cases were the difficult at least for me. <laughs> okay, Madhu. Thank good you. Thank you. Good night. See you. See you next Tuesday. Thank, thank you, sir. It was excellent, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Doubt, sir. Yeah, please, please. Sir, uh, 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 cerebellum involvement uh, when compared to uh, the um, posterior involvement, you told uh, involvement of the eye and another, another, another point, sir. Yeah, correct. Because no, if a person with severe attacks are coming. If the eyes, there is no eye sense like nystagmus or any other problem in the eye, or if the speech is also not affected. Okay, you, sir. Yeah, cannot differentiate sensory attacks from a similar attacks. Because what I'm trying to say is that any degree of incoordination in the upper limb can occur with sensory attacks. Any degree of lower limb incoordination can occur with, with uh, sensory attacks. Then don't worry, next week I will show one, two, three cases showing that thing. Uh, even know where the foot is goes that way. I can see ballistic like movements in sensory attacks. Okay. So, such violent uh, involvement, even arm levitation, arm going on its own, can all occur with uh, sensory implantation. I think next two, three, I think some uh, that I will show. One more thing I forgot to mention somebody put the, the sensory supply, the face. That also I promise I will show, but I forgot about it. Next class, I, I will show this one. Uh, various types of sensory idea presentation case. And also the sensory supply of the piece. The various patterns of facial sensory loss in Latin medicine. Sir, another thing you told us, sir, D1 involvement, uh, uh, mainly sub, uh, D1 supplies mainly the abductor policies uh, longer, yeah, sir. Right. And, uh, another one, uh, 
predominantly uh, C8 supplies uh, uh, another thing you told us, sir. C8 predominantly. Uh, these two cases also I'll show you. Sir. Not in down. I'll show the I'll show the diagram how this is D1 is maximally affected in cervical tree. Why C8 is maximally affected in uh, post arachnoid cases? I'm not uh, able to hear you. Post, sir. Post to thoracotomy. You know, okay, part. sir. Okay, sir. When the cardiac surgery, you know. Um, okay, C sir. CABG, sir. Or they can also go and develop the lower plexus involvement. Then okay. the separate the C8 is maximally affected. Okay, sir. So I will say next time. And straight away, I will copy it down before I forget. All these things collect next time. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir.